Hello and welcome. My name is Raymond Gibbons from BMS Accountants in Navan County Meath. And today I want to talk to you about starting your own business or about having that idea that you might have in your mind to develop your own business. The law of self-employment is very strong for a lot of people. It might be that they're unhappy in their current employment. It might be that they're long-term unemployed and they see no other option to earn any extra money. It could be that they see it as a way of getting greater wealth. Or it might be a way of spending more time with the family. Whatever it is, people have different reasons and they're equally as important to them. Be mindful though that going into business for yourself does carry a lot of risks. Financial risk. If you're currently employed, you're earning your wage, you might be getting a pension paid on your behalf by your employer, you'll have holiday pay, bank holiday pay, and you'll have a set wage coming in every week. Risking, giving that up to take on an uncertain income or an uncertain future by developing your own business from scratch is a great risk for you and your family to have to take on board. So and it's not one that leaves, that should be taken lightly. Secondly, time. You might think that going into business for yourself will allow you more flexibility. But in truth, if you're developing your own business, you're going to find that you're spending a lot of time working on your business. It might be from doing advertising, to preparing for meetings, being on the road trying to conjure up new clients, the admin side of things, you will find that your time is very much consumed by your new business from the get-go. So the important thing to do though is to be mindful of these risks and to develop a risk analysis as it might be to see to totally understand the risks involved in going into your business. Most of us develop businesses that are local or will be local and will, will be what we call SMEs, that is small to medium enterprises. You might dream of having that large profile company that will float one day in the stock exchange, but they're few and far between. The reality is that most people set up businesses in their own areas to earn a decent income and to try and spend more time with their families as I was saying, but that can prove very difficult. You could be a mechanic who's working for someone else and you decide that you want to set up your own garage. You might be an accountant who's going out on their own. You could be a hairdresser who's decided that she or she is going to go out on their own. The point is that it'll be a local small enterprise in the main. There are lots of supports out there for us, so we need to be aware of those. You need to contact your local enterprise office and find out what grants might be available to help you to get your business off the ground. Before we go on, there are probably three things to remember. That firstly, setting up your own business is more than likely going to be a small to medium enterprise in your local area. Secondly, that most people go into business for themselves to try and improve their quality of life. So before you start out, make a list of what's important to you, in not just in life, but in this business. Is it that you're going to be your own boss and making the decisions for yourself? Is it making greater wages? Is that what's really driving you? Is it spending more time with the family? Is it a lack of enjoyment in your current employment so that when you go working for yourself, you feel this is going to deliver greater enjoyment and greater more enthusiasm from you to succeed? Thirdly, what's also and equally important to remember, your business is unique to you, but that does not mean that the business is unique. There are very few unique businesses out there. Your business will more than likely exist somewhere else in your local area or further afield. And that's great because competition is good. Competition drives us on. Competition ensures that we try our best. Competition ensures that we stay sharp. But equally, by looking at competitors, we can learn from their mistakes. People who've been in business a long time, we can learn from their successes. So it's good to have competition. And it's good for you to help you do your research to ensure that you learn from the mistakes of those who went before you, but equally, that you learn from what they did well. So market research, whether that's looking at your com competitors, looking at consumers, looking at pricing, all that type of good stuff, that's all very important. And being prepared before you take that initial step into, go into working for yourself is very important. If I'm asked by a client or someone who's going into business for themselves, and they ask me, what do I think it takes to succeed? There are many reasons, but for me, there's five really important uh, factors that can determine whether you're going to be a su success or not. Firstly, careful planning and research. Secondly, enthusiasm. You have to be enthusiastic about what you're doing. Thirdly, self-confidence. Believe in yourself. Believe in your business. Believe in your product. 
Fourth, commitment. Perseverance. It's, all, it's crucial to succeeding in business. Many times you'll find that you might have a, what you think is a great business product, a great business plan, uh, but just might not be happening for you for one reason or another. Economic downturn, competition reacting to new entrants, whatever it is, but you need to persevere and push on. And finally, not having a fear to fail. I think it's something we don't do very well in this country. Failure is seen as a nearly a nasty thing, something to be ashamed of. Going into business for yourself, there is a risk of failure. Don't be afraid of that. And don't be afraid, I think in America they have a great saying, if you're going to fail, fail early. And it's important for you to learn from your mistakes as much as you will learn from the things that you do right. So before you start out in business, ask yourself some important questions. Does your business exist currently in the local area? Or maybe slightly further afield where you can go and pay a visit to it? Secondly, what is it that the competition does well? And what is it they don't do so well? Because you need to be able to maximize these. What do consumers think about their product and their services? Are they happy with them? Do they have a loyal and reliable consumer base or customer base that they can fall back on? Because remember, when you launch your business, you're going to be looking to take some of those customers away from that. So it's important that we know what they do and what they don't do so well. Ask yourself some key questions. Firstly, does the business exist in your local area? And if so, how's it doing? Does it have a loyal customer base? What do consumers really think about the business? Do they buy from it because of the fact that it's the only business locally that sells a product or provides a service? Or is it because they genuinely go to it because they do, it, they do what they do well. What's their unique selling point? Is it price? Is it customer care? Is it quality of products and services? And therefore, what are you going to have to do to match that or to better that? Can you do that business better than them? That's really what you're after. Because you're going to have to try and take away their, their customers. You're going to be trying to win those customers over with the quality of your service or product. So it's important that you do your research on these uh, on the competition. Equally, find out what the consumers want. What, are, what would they want different? Is parking an issue for where they go? So will you have ample parking in your location? Is accessibility for disabled or wheelchair people? Is their unit old? And are you going to have a nice new modern facility that they're going to that consumers are going to enjoy uh, get a better shopping experience from? So it's important that you consider all these questions in your mind about how you're going to win over those customers. When you go into business for yourself, there are two types of considerations to bear in mind. Business considerations and personal considerations. We've tipped on some of the personal considerations and we'll speak about those again later. But referring just purely now looking at the business considerations that you must take into account. Firstly, when you look at the business, you need to develop, a, in my view, a good business plan to support your business. So you're going to ask yourself, do you have the necessary resources to make a success of your business? And not just financial resources. Do you have the skills? Are you, are you capable of looking after the admin side of things as well as being the mechanic or as well as being the hairdresser or as well as selling uh, in, your, in your retail outlet? What other skills do you require? Marketing skills, do you have those? So do you need to upskill in any of these? And does your local enterprise office offer any training facilities or training, uh, training classes that you may attend? For example, your local enterprise office will run mentoring sessions. Can you avail of those mentoring sessions which will help you put together a business plan or will help you understand the importance of managing cash flow? All these things are critical. How much cash do you actually need to start up in business? Do you know this? Do you feel that it's five, ten, seven thousand euros? Have you actually sat down? and worked it out. You might need IT equipment. You'll certainly need money to invest in advertising. You will, might need rent if you're renting a, an outlet or, or, or a workshop. So you need to have some money for a deposit and for the first month's rent, which is paid in advance. Will you need to hire staff from the get-go? And if you do, do you have the sufficient funds to pay their wages? Other uh, business considerations, of course, is the competition and consumers. So who is your competition in the local area? How much of a market share do they have and how much of a market share are you looking to obtain? 
have you prepared a budget to show to give yourself targets and goals and objectives so that you can actually see how your business is progressing from day one there are many types of business considerations that you must take on board one of the key things and the most important thing in my view is that you go and speak to an accountant before you actually start uh, with your business your accountant will advise you on what type of business structure you should set up sole trader partnership limited company it's important to get this right from the beginning most people will set up as sole traders and maybe develop a limited company as the, as the business grows but that may not be suitable for you from, from the beginning so it's important that you take advice on this equally by looking at what grants are available to you from the local enterprise offices you'll only get to know this by talking to somebody who is in the know Normally, you will go to your accountant. If they're local, they'll be aware. They may have actually worked with the local enterprise offices, so they will have contacts there, and they'll be able to speak to them on your behalf and advise you of who it is you should speak to. So these business considerations are very important, and you should just sit down and take stock of what it is you require to make your give your business the best chance of success. Just to touch on some other personal considerations you might need to take into account. The most important thing is health and stamina. Will you be able to put in the hours that are required? Most startup businesses will consume your time. You'll find that you're working perhaps longer hours. You'll be working at night. You might be seeing less of your family. And these stresses that come on you because of that, they can, they can take their toll. So do you have the health and stamina to be able to make a success of your business? Do you have a trusted advisor? family member, friend, that you can sit down to and talk about your business idea and let them hear what it is you're planning to do and let, let them give you feedback. Because feedback is important, even if it is negative, as long as it's constructive in some way that you know, I didn't think of that, but maybe they will be the type of person that you can rely on for advice. So it's very important that if you have a trusted advisor or family friend, that you actually use that. And speaking of family, do you have the support of your family? If you have um, a spouse and young children, then perhaps they may not be as confident about this business adventure that you are. It's important that they're on side with this because that type of support is going to be critical for you to make a success. So you still, you're still deciding to start this business. You've gone through all the personal pros and cons and you're still happy that you have what it takes to make a success of this business. The next question you might have is, do I start this business from scratch or do I go and try to buy an existing business? There are benefits to both and there are cons to both as well. Clearly, starting off on your own, it's going to be a little bit more difficult perhaps to develop a customer base, a loyal customer base. And your advertising will have to be particularly focused on trying to get those new customers across the line and into your business. Starting from scratch will probably take mean it's going to take longer to establish your business and to gain that trust and to get the rewards that that will bring later on. Buying an, buy an existing business can be an expensive undertaking, so it's important to understand why it is the owner is looking to sell. Are they retiring? Will they be taking your money and starting up a business elsewhere? And again, being a direct competitor and perhaps taking that loyal customer base with them. If they're retiring and you're buying an existing business, have a look at the customer base. Review the sales. If they have debtors, review the debtors and find out how old those debtors are and what type of clientele have they got. Is it a returning clientele? Is it continuously new business or is there a steady stream of reliable sales from an existing customer base? Equally, by buying the existing business, are the customers going to stay, do you think? Or is there a risk that they will move elsewhere because they might have been attached to the business owner? This is a big, big risk when you're providing services. So for example, many accountants will have bought um, over practices only to find that the customer base moves on because their attachment was with the previous owner and they just haven't taken to the change in regime and that they're looking for a new accountant of their choice, not one that was put upon them by the decision to sell this particular business. Equally, if you're buying an existing business, what have the trends been? Are sales growing or have they been falling? Are margins growing or at least stable? Is the, was the business continuously profitable? 
Was there a downturn in profits in the last number of years? And what was the reason for that? It might be that the, that the business owner had just grown unenthusiastic about the business and felt that he, that he or she wanted to get out. And as a result, the business suffered. But then, have you got the skills to make that business thrive again? If you're buying over a large amount of stock in the business, what condition is the stock in? Is it aged? Is it easily sold? Or has it been overinflated? Because overinflating stock can have an impact on the profitability. So when you're looking at the business, you have to understand what the state of that existing, of that business is in now. When you invest money into any business, be it 25, 50,000, 5,000, how quickly do you want to get repaid that money? What's the return on investment? What's the payback period? It's important that you understand these, or at least appreciate that when you're investing your money into this business, that it is just that, an investment. And we want a return on that money. We're not investing in a business to lose money. We're trying to get that money back into our pockets with an added interest or an added return on that investment. So it's very important that we understand that what we're doing is investing in our futures. And by the definition of the very word, investing, we want to get a positive return on our money. In short, and I hope you have got some enjoyment at least out of the video. This is one of our very first videos, so we hope to improve the quality of them over time. But what's important here is that from your perspective, watching this video, did you get something positive from it? If you did, please leave a comment. If you didn't, equally leave a comment. Let us know what we can do different. Is there a topic you'd like us to discuss later on? We'll certainly be happy to try and do that for you. Why don't you visit us on our website, www.bmsaccountants.ie. Give us a phone call. Like us on our Facebook page. But most importantly, if you're starting out in business, best of luck. Take that giant step. It can be very rewarding. But take that giant step, fully understanding the risks involved in developing your own business. And we look forward to seeing you again. Take care.